And our top focus right now is the United States of America. Less than 10 days after a Hindu temple was desecrated in New York, a similar incident has now occurred in Sacramento, California. Amongst the disturbing messages found on the walls were the threatening words, Hindus go back, which have sparked serious concern within the local Hindu community. In response to this intolerance, community leaders have pledged to come together against hate, emphasizing their dedication towards promoting peace and unity. The incident marked by hateful graffiti and water supply cut has sparked a strong response from the Hindu community. According to officials, hate crime investigations are currently underway, with BAPS now collaborating closely with law enforcement to address the vandalism and ensure the responsible individuals face consequences. But why exactly is this anti-Hindu propaganda taking place in the United States of America, especially a few months before their general elections? I take this conversation forward with me. I have Dr. Lavanya Vemsani, author and professor. We have also with us uh, Ambassador Suresh Kumar Goyal. We have Professor Madhav Nalapat and we have Patikrit Pain on the conversation, uh, on the broadcast, pardon me. I want to begin this conversation with Professor Madhav Nalapat. Professor Nalapat, what do you make of some of these attacks that have now taken place in the past 10 days? Two attacks reported. Is this something that's happening because coincidentally a lot of these incidents are being reported from across the world? We do see that there is some tension in Europe, within Europe, within America, between communities or does it have to also be looked at from the lens and perspective of the upcoming elections? Look, uh, I'd like to say that uh, the United States, the people of the United States generally are a very tolerant people. And uh, frankly, the Hindu community has had no problems at all with, uh, with the people of the United States, whether they be white Americans or African Americans or Latinos, no problem at all. They get along very well with them. The problem is, uh, if I'm, you know, Devika, for quite a long time, I've been describing the sino wahhabi alliance, the alliance of the Chinese Communist Party with uh, ultra-fanatic believers uh, of Wahhabism, which is uh, very different from, uh, from, from the genuine uh, Islam that is moderate and which is also practiced very largely in the United States as it is in India. Now, the Sino-Wahhabi alliance sees India as a threat. Why? One, I would like to say, I mean, I dislike you going to bring religion into this, but the fact is that when you talk about Hindu Americans, they are the most probably the most productive per capita individuals in the United States. In terms of income generated per year, in terms of taxes paid for per year, in terms of the incidence of of criminal acts per year being the lowest among this particular group of people. Therefore, they are an example to the rest of the United States. And on the other hand, you have members of the Sino-Wahhabi Alliance who, frankly, many of them live off the state. Uh, they don't pay their taxes. They, they don't have an income. They live off welfare. And uh, very importantly, they believe in violence, which uh, which which is something which is horrible and which should never be permitted in any society. A society is built on tolerance, on moderation, on non-violence and that kind of a culture. It cannot be built on the basis of hate and violence. So I'm not surprised, Devika, that uh, the Sino-Wahhabi Alliance is targeting Hindu temples. The difference is, frankly, that in the past, the, you know, the governments in the United States, Australia, I mean, forget about Canada, it's, uh, it's not in very good shape under Justin Trudeau, but the United States, Australia, UK, etc., they were not taking serious note of this uh, three, four years ago, two, three years ago. Now they are taking serious note of it. And one of the reasons is you're seeing the highly successful visit of Prime Minister Modi to the United States, in which the, the PM and the US president got together. And uh, frankly, India has become a very important linchpin of, the, of keeping a secure and safe and stable Indo-Pacific. So from that point of view, I think more and more people in the US recognize the value of India. And so finally, the federal agencies 
the law enforcement agencies are taking this criminal action, this hate crime seriously. And I hope they'll bring the perpetrators to justice because this is an abominable offense. You know, trying to hit the place of worship of any community is an abominable offense and it should never be tolerated in any democracy they become. Absolutely. I want to bring in Dr. Lavanya Vemsani into the conversation as well. Dr. Lavanya, how exactly are these attacks now being viewed within the United States of America and what really is the conversation that's taking place there? Right. Um, there is definitely international players in this. Um, I agree with my previous speaker. There is definitely uh, international speakers and uh, the way we have to see these hate crimes uh, also has to change. We have to, we should not see them as disparate acts or something going on here, something going on there. And the way we describe it also has to change. Um, we have to note them as hate crimes against Hindus, in, in, intentional hate crimes. Vandalism is inadequate to describe what is happening. You know, within uh, two we, within 10 days framework, two temples are attacked. And with similar graffiti and similar message, uh, and water lines are cut. This is not simple hate crime. This is, uh, this is not vandalism. They are not attacking some home or somebody's uh, place of work or uh, residence. They are attacking the sacred space uh, where Hindus gather. Uh, they know this will uh, provoke uh, the sentiments of Hindus, so they are doing it intentionally. So this has to be recorded as a true hate crime. Vandalism is not uh, enough to describe what is happening. It has to be described as desecration of sacred space. That is what the intention was. It is to desecrate the sacred space so that the peace is disturbed and somehow this gets an international attention. They, their intention is not to uh, have it as a small vandalism crime. This is a big hate crime uh, supported by um, uh, criminal elements, I would say, uh, in, uh, in the US. Uh, so it has to be dealt with seriously. FBI is taking um, action. Uh, we are happy about that. Uh, and uh, it has to be seriously dealt with. Uh, the, the, the criminal elements in the US uh, so far have uh, not been uh, taken care of, so they have to be uh, really um, arrested and uh, criminal procedures has to be recorded. Uh, this cannot go uh, like unlike unlike before. You know, uh, from last year to this year, there was more than a 60% increase in hate crimes against Hindus. Uh, this actually shows how how fast and how frequent and how vicious these are. Uh, so so. Um, uh, uh, our words have to change, our actions towards it has to change, it has to be coordinated effort between the government, between the FBI and be between the agencies and community and the way we describe these criminal acts uh, has also to change. Uh, that's the only way to uh, take care of these uh, criminal activities. Okay, I want to bring in Patikrit Pain into the conversation. Patikrit, your thoughts on what's really happened, uh, two temple attacks uh, in uh, less than two weeks. Uh, you know, Mega, first and foremost, I think we are trying to be politically correct while describing what is happening. Uh, the reason is this. When the Prime Minister of India went to United States, just before that, a designated terrorist called Gurpatpan Singh Pannu files a civil lawsuit in a district court in Southern District of New York. And it, you know, issues a summon for Government of India and the National Security Advisor. Do you think it is possible without some kind of a sanction from someone on top in the United States government? And then when Prime Minister was there, the White House invited the Khalid Sassan, certain elements of the Sikh community. The Sikh community in general is very, very patriotic, hardworking, honest. But the Khalid, certain groups who have allegiance and leanings towards the Khalistanis, they were invited. So what messaging was being given by the White House is something you must understand. Time and again, uh, you know, United States Commission for International Religious Freedom has been used to pin down India by fake allegations of minority persecution, even when in Bangladesh, there is an open persecution of Hindus going on and the United States remains completely silent on it. So frankly, what I'm trying to say is this. I am not say saying that the government of the United States is involved in it. 
but whatever the government of united states or at least sections of the state department has been doing in terms of pinning down india trying to project india in a particular way trying to project that the majoritarian hindus are you know not so good people you are emboldening others to do exactly the same you are emboldening them now if you look at the pannu issue it is a sheer case of double standard uh, of the united states when it comes to fighting against terrorism and let's not have two ways about it when it comes to hardeep singh nijjar case what was the stand of united states government how are they looking down at the modi government so if you look at it in united states these things which are happening and there is a total huge left cabal which has spared no uh, opportunity to which, which has left no stone unturned to pin down the indian community especially the hindus demonizing them and unfortunately apart from certain lip service uh, you know you will not see some strong actions have ever been taken at least by this dispensation in united states tabo last year in october 22 a fugitive economic offender uh, somebody was declared as a fugitive economic offender in india ramachandran vishwanathan came out with a one page ad in wall street journal called it magnetsky's 11 and they wanted sanctions under the magnetsky act on some extremely important cabinet ministers of india and that was the time when some important head of state or dignitary from india was about to visit united states when this lawsuit was filed against nse and government of india do you think somebody can do it without some kind of a sanction do you think if any any court in india will ever do anything like that if president biden or the head of state of any western country were to visit india because indian government will not allow it now somebody is giving that green signal that it's okay if you do it and this desecration desecration of the temples defecation of the temples is not that you know only started last week or last to last week it has been going on for quite some time the i think one of the consulates in india was attacked right inside new york or somewhere uh, one of the prominent cities tell me what has been the stand of united states when it comes to fighting against war on terror or or talking about re respecting the territorial integrity of other country of countries do you see the same standard being applied on india as they expect others to apply on united states and its own citizens you don't so i think our tolerance has been taken to extreme levels in Un in bangladesh we all know what is being done by uh you know the government the blue eyed boy of mohammad yunus of united states and what is being done over there to the minorities especially the hindu what has been the stand of united states commission for international religious freedom what has been the stand of the united states state department i mean if i'm wrong please please tell me that i'm wrong so you are emboldening that certain elements Oh, yeah. The state government is okay with state department is okay with it. If the government of United States is fine with all these things, then why should I also not do it? You have okay. deliberately, and it's not just today. It's been for decades. The Hindu community has been demonized, and this is the outcome of it. I also blame previous governments also that they have never tried to defend or you know uh, say that it is not like that. It's only in the last few years Prime Minister Modi has been going and. projecting a very different picture of india and the, the actual picture but i am telling you let's not be politically too correct there are elements inside united states of america who have very very strong disdain for what we stand for as sanatani hindus okay all right so in Ambassador spite of all the grand lectures of secularism the reality is this yes united states is a beautiful country it has beautiful people those in the government I've okay. never taken a stand that if you talk about secularism, it is equally applicable to all. Somewhere, when it comes to secularism, Hindus have been kept out of it. We do not deserve the same treatment. That has been the messaging for a long time, and this is the outcome of it. If I'm wrong, please prove me. Okay, uh, Master Goel, bring you into the conversation, Master Goel. Um, your thoughts, uh, really, on what's happened and how much of a protest does the government of India then also need to raise? Uh, with the united states of america with what's happening uh thank you very much devika after all these interventions i really do not know where to begin and what to say really uh, but let me uh, just recall uh, i think uh, lavanya did mention in her intervention 
and also Professor Nalpa that FBI is already uh, working on the on the, on the desecration, uh, hurt, hurt crime, uh, crime, yeah. hate crime, etc. Whatever it is, but that F FBI is already working on that crime, trying to basically uh, uh, get to the root of the plea, arrest, whatever it is, they will decide. So first of all, I want to start with the point that whether there was a tacit approval or not an approval or whatever it is. Mm. But fact is that just like in the case of assassination attempts against Trump, FBI has been called in and FBI sees the matter and they're working on it. And therefore, that is one thing and uh, rather the electricity with which they have done it is amazing. I really wish that our own law and order authorities would be so fast and so expeditious in taking action on those kind of hate crimes which are taking place all over India. I will not name it, but they are. Okay, so leave leave that for the time being. Leave, leave it aside. I'm coming to why is it happening or what is happening. Uh, I'm going to put it down to the basically the election process and even earlier, there has been an growing attempt in the USA, uh, what Trump called MAGA, Make America Great Again. When Trump one of the candidates, presidential candidates, begins to blame the Haitian immigrants for eating the pets in the constituency in the in the Ohio province where they where they stay. What is the name of the uh, metropolitan area? I don't remember now. He blaming the immigrants for some of the of the countries. The fact is that even the earlier election campaign of Trump had based itself on the poor, blue collar worker, white communities who have blamed the immigration for most of the problems of the American economy. And I see what is happening. There is not a crime against Hindus or Indians per se, but crime against immigrants. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the number of Indians who are involved at the Capitol Hill in politics, the number of Indians who are actually in the, uh, the attorney generals, uh, Vivek Kramaswamy uh, is there and the number of Indians who are on the Wall Street who are working in the American system is actually quite amazing and that's the reason we have even Prime Minister Modi when he called them when he met them he called them the brand ambassadors of India simply because it is a very influential community and therefore I do hope that the Indian community would actually raise its voice to say that what is it what is happening in the USA is not acceptable because it is a hate crime against a particular community and I would call it the Indian community in the US of despite and I think what is happening is a questioning of their existence in the USA. Point number one. And therefore we should look at it from that point of view. And you ask me what should the Indian government be doing? Yes, Very because good. ultimately, yes, Ambassador Gold, because that, that, is an, that is a <laughs> crucial aspect, right? How many of these incidents do we need to highlight? Uh, and when is it that the Indian government needs to raise a serious protest versus, uh, I'm sure, of course, backdoor, back channel conversations, of course, continue to go on between uh, our government uh, and, you know, uh, the United States representatives as well. But what is it uh, and when is it that we need to, of course, take a very strong stance and position? Your perspective on that. To respond to it when you intervene. May I? With the permission, Devika? Yes, Ambassador Goyal, I wasn't intervening, sir. My apologies. I was just clarifying the question to the viewer. Devika, I, as I said, first of all, uh, when we uh, look at a matter, and I think it was on news that some time ago when there was a question of uh, the uh, White House meeting with the six extremist elements, or uh, six separatist elements in the USA. And I had said that this is the part of the election process over there, and we need to keep the larger picture in mind. Today, I'm going to say that as far as the government of India is concerned, we need to basically look at it very, care very carefully. We will have a cause to really take the action up if the American law and order machinery does not act on it. And that's the reason I mentioned right in the beginning that I'm happy to know that FBI is seized of the matter and they are working on it. Therefore, number one, uh, we need to wait for the result of their investigation. Number two. Uh, I had said at that time that rather than taking it up officially at this time because 
no government with the elections uh, process taking place in the USA is going to be take going to be attaching great official uh, weight to it really simply because of the role internal dynamics. But the conversations do take place. Our embassy in Washington, I'm sure, must be talking to all the people in in uh, at the Capitol Hill in White House to tell them that this is going to have the repercussions in India. Number and last point. <clears throat> Objected to the USA mentioning about the human rights records in India and the report which is submitted to the Senate. What is preventing us from making our own report on these kind of incidents and present that in uh, in the Parliament? We are not doing that basically because I think we are wiser than the Americans. We do not want to hurt our relations, but these kind of uh, you know uh, very. Uh, precipitous uh, uh, actions and rather do it in a more careful, measured manner. And one more thing that I, if you permit me, I would say judicial processes in India. Uh, I think it's a good thing that our judicial uh, processes are far wiser and they do take note of these things and work on these things. I remember the Supreme Court action. I really wish, I really wish that the federal authorities in the USA would be able to take so much notice of these events and pronounce it. Thank okay. you, Devita. Professor Nalapath. Professor Nalapath, your thoughts on what Ambassador Suresh Kumar Goel has also now spoken about. I just want to understand from you as far as India's response or India's protests against what's happening on American soil is concerned, uh, how would you suggest one goes about it? Uh, Devika, when you are close to someone of your family and you have a problem, you will not really go on the front road uh, or you know, outside your house and then start shouting for the whole world to hear what your the issue is. There is quiet diplomacy going on, very strong and active diplomacy going on. And that is partly the reason why the law enforcement agencies and the FBI are taking this very seriously. So I think there's a difference between, uh, you know, megaphone di diplomacy and quiet diplomacy. And I think the other government, because the US is a is a good friend and, and a good partner, uh, is doing quiet diplomacy and doing it uh, very effectively. And yes, you know, our discussions are quite right. I mean, just look at Kamala Harris. You know, she was brought up by, by, by a mother who is completely Indian. And uh, you look at Usha Vance, again, uh, completely Indian, you know, and uh, she is the, the wife of someone who could well be the next vice president of the United States. And she's been a very strong factor in the success of J.D. Vance. Uh, J.D. Vance himself writes in that Hillbilly Eulogy, a wonderful book, which I think everyone should read. So I just want to point out that in an election, I can tell you, Every vote counts in this election. And quite frankly, the Hindu American vote is a significant vote. It's nearly 3 million. And there are 3 million, of, uh, and frankly, uh, a large part of them uh, do vote, are eligible to vote. And they are a very important vote bank. And I think something like a desecration of a temple is going to affect them very badly, especially because if nothing is done about it, and which is the reason why, in my view, something is finally being done about it, to the surprise of many of us who, I mean, who have been as cynical as Patikritis and watching these developments and finding lack of action. So I would say that a lot of quiet diplomacy is going on, a lot of very strong diplomacy is going on, and as a consequence, the law enforcement agencies in the U.S. are active. My Expectation is the perpetrators will be brought to justice and made an example of because a peaceful, peace-loving community like the Hindu community, I mean like the Pandit community in Kashmir, completely peace-loving. What happened to them? The Hindu community is a very peace-loving community and it does not deserve uh, this kind of an attack on it or any kind of an attack on it. We must nurture a culture of peace and non-violence and I'm sure that has been strongly communicated to the White House uh, to, uh, and right to the top of the United States by the top of the governance system in India. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.